Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Stoked on Spokes. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing my final thoughts on the Double Decker Full Frame Bag by Rogue Panda Designs. So again, this is the final review video. If you haven't seen the first impressions and kind of reasons why I got this bag, make sure to check out that video. I'll put it in the description below so you can check that out before maybe watching this video. It'll give you a little bit of an insight as to why I chose this bag and yeah, basically just that. So let's hop into the final thoughts. One of the biggest questions I got on the first impressions video with this bag was why lacing versus traditional straps? The reason being, and it's purely, I guess, personal preference at this point. You can go with one or the other. It just depends on what you want. Uh, my biggest reason for choosing the bolt-on and lacing versus straps was because it's gonna stay on the Kona Rove for the most part. I think I've only taken it off once since I got it, and that was for that first impressions video. Ever since I got it, it's just stayed on the bike. That's basically my main reason for picking lacing and bolt-on versus straps. Yeah, it just, makes the bike I think look better. Some people may be wondering if there's an advantage to one versus the other. I think if you're going for something that you can easily take on and off the bike, definitely, definitely go for the straps. If you are looking for something more permanent, I guess I should say, you can still take it off, but it just takes a little more time. I would say go for the lacing and bolt-on. So the Double Decker Full Frame Bag by Rogue Panda Designs has been probably my favorite bag that I've bought for the Kona Rove and I'll mention some of the reasons in this review. There's not gonna be a lot of negative aspects because I haven't really found many to name. So it's just gonna be a couple of gripes that I think would make the bag better for everyday reuse. Um, but really just, I mean, it's already a great bag. They're just gonna be small. So one of the things I talked about in the first impressions video was that this bag was purchased with the intention of commuting and everyday riding and I still believe it's the best bag for that. I know when it comes to bike packing, a lot of people buy bags to go on these huge expeditions and you know multi-day trips. The reality of it for me is that this bag is more so just a bag that helps me get from point A to point B without having to wear a backpack most of the time. So I can fit not only my spare tools and tubes, but things like a jacket if I want to, or winter gloves if I wanted to. It's within the frame so it doesn't interfere and yeah, the capacity is there. The organization with the double decker is there, so it's not all clumped down at the bottom. A couple of downsides one might note with a full frame bag is, well, where do you carry your water? And if it's a long ride, I will carry my water bladder in the top pocket because the double decker does have a little hole for the hose of a water bladder. So no problems there. If you're going on a big ride, I just put my water bladder. If I'm going on a shorter ride, I usually just opt for my one water bottle under the Kona Rove. If you're looking for a full frame bag and you have that third bottle mount on the down tube of your bike, then you've got a solution. If you don't have those bolts for a third water bottle, a quick solution for that would be just get a traditional drinking water bottle and you can fit plenty of those in the full frame bag. An interesting note that someone mentioned in the first impressions video was that you may not be able to use a U-lock. And I don't know if this was done on purpose by Rogue Panda, but I actually can use a U-lock when it comes to locking this bike up. The front of the bag where the bag meets the head tube does have a little bit of room. I don't know if that was to leave some room for the hose, for the water bladder, or so you can lock it up via the head tube. That, or if you are running a full frame bag, you can always lock up your bike using the rear triangle. Now that being said, I don't think that you buy this bag with the intention of locking your bike up in many places. Last year when I was commuting to work on a different schedule, I had, you know, the luxury of being able to bring my bike into work. A full frame bag isn't one of those bags that you would traditionally use to leave your bike outside because, well, it has your belongings. But you can lock it up, it can be done with a full frame bag, there's options. So how's it holding up after several months of use? Well, it's great. I really can't tell that it's been used all that much even though I've used it every single day basically. Anytime I take the Rove out. You guys have seen it, it's on the Rove, and I use it 
for anything, to carry lunch, to carry tools, to carry jackets, clothing, all of that good stuff fits in there with room to spare. The zippers have broken in nicely, but they are not getting to the point where they're loose or feel loose. They still feel really rigid and secure. The mounting points, so both the bolts and the lacing, haven't budged and don't really seem like they're going to budge. And in general, the structure, so the fabric structure of the bag seems to be holding up nice. I was afraid that there would be a lot of sag when it broke in, but it's broken in nicely and don't really notice any sag if I'm being honest. So while I have not been able to go bikepacking with this bag as in an overnight trip, I have tested it out on many day trips as you guys have seen. I have no doubts that it can handle a bikepacking trip. In fact, I am still looking forward to when I finally break it in on an overnighter because I want to see how much I can pack into this bag. Now Rogue Panda does not claim this bag is waterproof, but we can do a waterproof test or weatherproof test. All right, we're gonna do the waterproof or weatherproof test now. We're just gonna see if you're like caught in a rainstorm, what would happen. Here in the front yard, we don't have a hose hookup, so I'm just gonna be using my water that I wash bikes with. Should be a good test. I think it's a little more fair than a hose. So inside I'm going to be putting this sort of paper, whatever you call it. I'm going to be testing out both sides. So the pocket I would put my valuables in, such as my phone, wallet, and then the main pocket. show you guys this. So, this is the valuables pocket, or what I like to call the valuables pocket. And it's fairly dry. You could see some water got in there. For the most part, pretty dry. That's quite amazing. Awesome. I could feel like, I don't know, you definitely feel the damp dampness coming through, so maybe it's a question of time. Let's check the other side. Oh, and this one definitely got more water. Interesting. Yeah, there's more water there. Not soaked, but definitely not dry. So there you have it. Definitely not waterproof, but it'll keep it a lot more dry than one would think. Lastly, I would like to talk about why I like this bag so much and why I think a frame bag is the best option for any bike, really. One of the biggest things that annoys me with other bikepacking bags is that you usually have a trade-off when it comes to mounting them. If you're mounting a saddle bag, you can't really run that with a dropper unless you get a dropper specific saddle bag. If you have something like a handlebar bag, it's usually interfering with something up front, whether that's your Wahoo, whether that's a light, whether that's cable rub, something up front might be interfering with it. If you have something like a top tube feeder bag, they interfere when, when it comes to unmounting your bike, they kind of get in the way. And anything like a stem bag interferes personally with my knees when I'm climbing out of the saddle. So a frame bag, really you don't notice it. Once you mount it and, and leave it on your bike for a little bit, you don't notice it and the benefits are great. You can load it with weight and you don't seem to notice the weight as much as if you were to load any other bike packing bag with that same amount of weight. Because it's in the middle of the bike and I would typically load the heaviest items towards the bottom, so really close to the bottom bracket, you don't feel that shifting in weight at all when you ride. 
So would I buy again and what is the benefit of maybe getting a custom bag versus a traditional stock, you know, full frame bag that happens to fit your bike? Well, yes, I would buy this bag again. And I think the benefit of a custom bag is the fact that you can do those bolt-ons um, and lacing, whereas a stock bag, you might not be able to do that because they come with straps. With a custom bag, you also get that satisfaction that it just fits perfectly in your bike. It's made for your bike and you know, Rogue Panda does a good job of offering a custom bag, but not at a custom bag price. I would definitely recommend this full frame double decker bag by Rogue Panda. Whereas if I was recommending a stock medium sized bag, X bag, whatever bag, I couldn't recommend it to everyone because I don't know if it would fit that bicycle. But a Rogue Panda bag will definitely fit. It's guaranteed to fit. Let's talk about the negatives and it's really not a negative. In fact, I think it would just be something that would add to this bag, but I don't think it's a negative. The only thing I would probably want to add is some sort of mesh or organizational pocket or system in the side pocket. Like I said in the first impressions, I would probably not get this bag without that additional side pocket. It's an upcharge of about $15, but I think it's worth every single penny because I use that to keep my phone, wallet, headphones, things like that. I would like to see some sort of organizational meshing inside of that to, you know, help alleviate sort of things shuffling around if you are going on a particularly bumpy ride. But that's, again, very small. And it's not a negative, it's something that would improve the bag. So that is it for this review. All in all, a great, great bag, not just for bikepacking, simply for bicycle riding. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you found it helpful or liked it, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. And if you enjoy content like this, consider subscribing. I will see you guys in the next one. Till then, remember to stay stoked on spokes.